I've been waiting for this camera to come out for over a decade. This is the Sony A9 III, and this is the first still digital camera with a fully global shutter. As we all know, film is sensitive to light, and to take a picture, we needed a way to hide it in a black box and then expose it to light for a very short but repeatable period of time. This is why almost all film cameras have a mechanical shutter. You set the shutter speed, which determines how long the shutter will open, exposing your film to light. Now, of course, you can't turn film on or off. If it's ever exposed to light, the film is ruined. So what about digital cameras or digital sensors? Why do we need a physical shutter at all? Well, the issue comes down to read speed. Up until this point, almost every single digital camera sensor ever made was able to capture an image one line at a time. Now, each sensor could do this at a different speed, and as technology's gotten better, they've gotten faster and faster. But if you shoot a fast-moving subject, you will be able to see this rolling shutter. Remember that it's not the exposure that's slow, it's the reading of the image, the data from every single pixel that's slow after the image is taken. To combat this, most professional cameras have a mechanical shutter. The sensor will turn on, the shutter will open, exposing the sensor to light. The shutter then closes and the sensor will retain that exposure data. And while the sensor is in complete darkness and has more time, it will read line by line and build that image. Up until this point with digital cameras, this was the only way to get a clean image of a fast moving subject. And although they do allow our cameras to sync with a strobe, they also severely limit what we can do with a strobe. And that's why every camera with a shutter has a very specific maximum sync speed. This is the fastest shutter speed you can choose that keeps your shutter completely open so that you can expose the entire frame with a single strobe flash. If you choose a faster shutter speed than your maximum sync speed, your shutter will become a small slit. And when you use a strobe light, you will only be exposing a portion of the frame. In comes the Sony A9 III, the first still camera with a true global shutter. This means that every single pixel on the sensor can be read at the exact same moment, making a mechanical shutter completely obsolete. We now have a professional camera with no moving parts. It has no rolling shutter distortion with still images or with video. And it also no longer has the limitations of a physical moving shutter. The fastest shutter speed now instead of 1 8,000th of a second is 1 80,000th of a second. Instead of shooting images at 10 frames per second, it can shoot 120 raw files per second. So it's clearly the greatest camera ever made, right? Not exactly. To make room for all of the circuitry needed to read every single pixel at the exact same moment, you're going to have to shrink each pixel, which means either fewer pixels, fewer megapixels, or smaller pixels, which means they're less sensitive to light. This camera takes a hit in both areas. It's only 24 megapixels, and the ISO performance is lacking when you compare it to other much cheaper cameras. Take a look at these shots out of my a7 IV versus the a9 III. I was really surprised to see that the a7 IV has approximately one and a half stops better ISO performance. Although the ISO does start at 125, the native ISO or the ISO you should choose to get the cleanest possible image is ISO 250. Everyone's always worried about how high their camera's ISO can go, but these days the lower ISO may even be more important depending on what type of photography you do. But if you're doing lots of flash photography or images in very bright light and you want shallow depth of field, you wanna be able to take images with a wide open aperture, having the ability to choose an extra low ISO could be very beneficial. And this camera kind of limits you there. And then on the high end, my a7 IV had two additional stops of ISO that the a9 III doesn't even give you. Next up, I wanted to test dynamic range. I shot both images in raw, totally backlit, and then tried to bring up the detail in post. Once again, you'll notice that the much cheaper and older Sony a7 IV has one to one and a half stops better ISO performance than the a9 III. So to be clear, you will get better image quality out of a camera that costs $2,500 versus this one that costs $6,000. You're gonna get more resolution, better ISO performance, and more dynamic range. So why would anybody buy the A9 III? It comes down to that global shutter. When it comes to video, you are never going to have to deal with rolling shutter again. Footage of drone blades looks perfect. Panning footage, no matter how fast, looks perfect. And you can now even capture strobes perfectly 
while you're recording video. Right now, I'm recording on the a7 IV, and this is a flash. Let's try the exact same thing with the a9 III. But with still photography, it's probably even more impressive. Because of the limitation of the mechanical shutter in the a7 IV, our maximum sync speed is 1 250th of a second. You can see in this shot here, if I go up to 1 320th of a second, my flash is unable to expose the entire frame. On the Sony a9 III, because there's no mechanical shutter in the way, I can sync at any shutter speed, up to 1 80,000th of a second. Now we're on the Sony a9 III, and I looked up the flash duration of my Pro photo B1 at full power, and it is almost exactly 1 1,000th of a second. So let's go ahead and set our shutter speed to 1 1,000th of a second. Of course, this introduces another problem that I've never had to deal with in my entire career as a photographer, and that is my shutter speed being faster than my flash duration. With this flash at full power, if I do go beyond 1 1,000th of a second, the flash will start acting like a normal ambient hot light. And as I raise my shutter speed, I'll be cutting the flash power as well. This allows me to shoot with a wide open aperture, capturing shallow depth of field in the middle of the day that looks like night. If I wanted to capture the shallow depth of field with any other camera on the market, the only way to do it is with an extremely dark neutral density filter. But using these can be so annoying because they're so dark, the camera can struggle to focus through them. Sometimes it's hard to even see through them. So you might have to focus the shot, screw on the neutral density filter, hope your subject hasn't moved, and then take the picture. Now, because every strobe is slightly different, as you choose faster and faster shutter speeds, there's a very good chance that you're going to miss the flash pop completely. Sony allows you to go into the menu and fine tune a small delay so that you can perfectly sync up your strobe with these incredibly fast shutter speeds. You can see here, I'm completely missing the flash pop, but then as I change the delay, I'm getting more and more of that flash power, and then I go beyond beyond the flash, and you can see I'm starting to lose power here. The other big spec is 120 frames per second raw shooting. I don't like telling people what they need and don't need, but guys, that's ridiculous. I can't even fathom anyone needing 120 frames per second. I've been a professional photographer for 15 years. I don't think I've ever used or wanted more than five frames per second. So 120 is absolutely absurd, but hey, it's cool they threw it in there. I really like the physical design of this camera. Sony's done a great job of putting physical dials for all of the most important functions. And then they've added five customizable function buttons that you can personally set to do whatever you want. The digital viewfinder is great, although I find myself using the screen on the back most of the time. And this is the best flippy screen I have ever used. It tilts up and down, as well as flipping out to the side, giving you full 360 degree control. So if you're like me and you film yourself all the time, you can see what you're filming. I think it's time for Sony and every other camera brand to upgrade their UI. I feel like they're cramming more and more information on these screens, but they're not making the screens any bigger. And then they're adding complicated touch gestures to these screens, but it's not nearly as smooth as today's smartphones. I find myself swiping all the time and nothing's happening. And I'm trying to touch certain options, but it's registering something else. I hate that I'm saying this, but I feel like we may need to have larger cameras with fewer physical buttons and a much more responsive, larger touchscreen. Right when I took the camera out of the box for the first time, it tried to get me to connect the camera to my smartphone. I had to download yet another new app. I don't know why Sony created another app. And when I tried to connect them, it didn't work. And I read all about it online. Other people are having the exact same issue. The number one response was, just wait longer for it to show up in the app. So I waited like five or 10 minutes, it didn't work. I think I tried to connect 15 times, and on the 16th time, even though I did the exact same thing, it finally worked. When the phone and camera are right next to each other, the connection is great, it's super smooth, but when I move my phone just a few feet away from the camera, it became slow and laggy, very low frame rate. I had to deal with the same disconnections that I deal with with my other Sony cameras, as well as every other camera I've ever tested. Again, this is something that I feel like all of the major camera brands need to really focus on making better because everybody's using their cameras remotely for one reason or another. Make that connection better, faster, more reliable. All current Sony cameras have absolutely incredible autofocus, and the autofocus on this camera is even better. Now, instead of just recognizing humans and locking onto human eyes, this camera can recognize humans, 
animals, birds, insects, airplanes, and cars and trains. When I went out to take actual pictures with this camera, the autofocus was amazing. But the truth is, the autofocus on all of my Sony cameras is almost flawless. Before I bought into Sony, I was always checking my focus. If I was taking portraits of somebody, I was zooming into every shot to make sure I got it before I moved on. I don't do that anymore. As I'm taking the pictures, the camera is locked onto my subject's eye. I can see it on the back of the camera. I can see it in the viewfinder. I know when I snap those pictures, they're going to be perfectly sharp. And although I trust Sony, I'm sure the A93 has even better autofocus. For me personally and what I shoot, I don't think I can really appreciate it. So like I said, I have literally been waiting for a global shutter digital camera to come out for over a decade now. You're probably wondering how many of these am I going to buy? And the answer is zero. Uh, this one is just a loaner from B&H. Thank you, B&H. Uh, this camera is just too much for me personally. At $6,000, there is absolutely no way I can justify owning a camera like this. But that doesn't mean I don't fully appreciate this camera and what it can do. And it also makes me so excited for what's coming in the future. In the coming years, we're gonna see much cheaper cameras with higher resolution, with better ISO performance. And eventually global shutters will become the standard. Having a physical moving shutter that's making noise and occasionally breaking will seem so ridiculous in a few years. And for everyone else, eventually global sensors will come to every camera, even cheap ones and cell phones, meaning that every camera, including your iPhone, will finally be able to sync with a strobe. That will be nuts. I know there's a few of you watching right now that have the money to go out and buy this camera. Buy it, you're gonna love it, I'm sure. But for everyone else who doesn't have six grand to spend on a camera, just wait a year or two, I guarantee you, this technology is going to trickle down into all of our cameras and it's going to change everything. We are doing photography contests with big prizes that are totally free to join every single month. Currently, the contest is architectural photography. So if you've taken pictures of homes or buildings inside or out, upload them for free. You can win $1,000 cash for first place, $500 cash for second, and third through 10th place are all going to get a free tutorial from the F-Stopper store. And while this contest is running, we are doing the biggest sale ever on our most successful tutorial ever, Where Art Meets Architecture with Mike Kelly. If you're interested in breaking into real estate or architectural photography, this is for you. This is by far our most successful tutorial. We've been selling it for years for $300, and this is the cheapest it has ever been for just 75 bucks. Check it out in the link below or fstoppers.com slash store.